I get comments like this all the time. Is Jesus' blood not enough for you? Is his grace not sufficient for you? But the thing is, you don't really understand what you're saying when you put comments like that online. You're basically saying, is Jesus' blood not enough for you to realize that you can live in sin? Is his grace not enough for you to realize that he paid for everything so that you can live however you want now? It really doesn't actually make any sense whatsoever. Because you're actually advocating for living in sin when you talk like this. And every single Christian you ever meet says, of course it's not okay to sin. We can't sin. But then they won't acknowledge the fact that sin is defined by God's laws. The same laws that Jesus kept. That's what made him sinless. If Jesus broke God's laws in the Torah, if he broke Sabbath, if he broke the dietary laws, if he broke the feast days, then he wasn't sinless. Furthermore, if he came as a prophet or emissary of God and told you that it's okay to break these laws or that these laws don't matter anymore, then that would make him a false prophet per scripture. Read Deuteronomy 13 and Deuteronomy 18 if you don't believe me. Isaiah 26, but when grace is shown to the wicked, they do not learn righteousness. Even in a land of uprightness, they go on doing evil and do not regard the majesty of the Lord. 2 Kings 17, they despised his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers and the warnings that he had gave them. They went after false idols and became false, and they followed the nations that were around them, concerning whom the Lord had commanded them that they should not do like them. And they abandoned all the commandments of the Lord their God and made for themselves metal images of two calves. And they made an Asherah and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. None was left but the tribe of Judah only. Judah also did not keep the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the customs that Israel had introduced. All throughout scripture, God gives us laws. God gives us ways so that we can reconcile ourselves back to him. And the people disregard it. They've always hated his laws. Exodus 16, and the Lord said to Moses, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? It's a reoccurring theme in history that the people don't want to keep God's laws. They constantly make excuses why not to keep them. And now, today, thousands of years later, people are using Jesus as an excuse not to keep the laws when Jesus even told us to keep the laws. John 7, 16, Jesus said he didn't come here to preach anything new. Luke 16, 17, Jesus said the earth will pass away before one dot of the law is void. Matthew 19, Jesus said to keep the commandments to enter life. I could go on and on. In fact, I have hundreds of videos showing you everywhere in scripture that Jesus told us to keep the commandments. And Paul can't negate that. He can't, or that makes him a false prophet also. So I guess the real question is, is Jesus' blood not enough for you to stop living in sin? Because it's very clear in the beginning of the book. Read the first five chapters of Leviticus. The blood of goats and lambs and calves wasn't enough to keep the people from sinning. They kept on disregarding God's laws and willfully sinning all throughout the Old Testament. Jesus came here to be an atoning sacrifice great enough that the people would stop sinning. But they've done the same thing that they've always done all throughout the Old Testament. They use it as an excuse to disregard God's laws. Even when scripture does not support it. Hebrews 10, if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment. You can play mental gymnastics with these verses all you want. You can make all the excuses you want, but it is not going to help you on Judgment Day. And you can listen to all the false pastors and false teachers that tell you it's okay to break God's laws. But guess what? They're going to be right next to you in hell. Our Father in Heaven and our Messiah who died for you to be a sacrifice great enough that you would stop living a life of sin, he is not going to accept the ignorance card. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. The more they increased, the more they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. 
They feed on the sin of my people. They are greedy for their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests. I will punish them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. Your pastor that's leading you astray is going to be just as guilty as you will be before the Most High. But at the end of the day, it's your fault that you didn't read God's word. It's your fault that you didn't do what he asked. It's your fault that you twisted Paul's letters to lawlessness. Is people's salvation not important enough for them to deeply study this? I mean, you think that Jesus came here to die for you so that you can live in sin. How ridiculous is that? And then you won't even acknowledge what sin is. Sinning is breaking the Sabbath. Sinning is not following the dietary laws. It's far more than just not killing people. God hardwired morality into everyone. Even the non-believers know that we're not supposed to steal or kill or commit adultery. But how can you sit over there and sweep everything said in the Bible under the rug and then claim to worship and love Jesus and not do anything he said and claim to love and worship God and not do anything that he said? Luke 6, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Matthew 15, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying the people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me? In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. All throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament, the people always say they're doing what God's will is, but they're not actually doing what God's will is. And then when they are corrected and people come to them saying, you're not doing God's will. It's written right here in the book. Why aren't you doing it? They reject those people. They slander them. They lie about them. They even kill them. And people have the audacity to come to my page and say, well, how come Jesus' sacrifice isn't good enough for you? I beg to differ. If you're not willing to change your life and live according to God's rules, all of them, not just the ones you agree with, then you're the one that is disregarding Jesus' sacrifice. You're the one that is abusing the spirit of grace. And you are the one that's going to have to stand before the judgment seat of the Most High and explain every idle word and every idle action that you have ever partaken in in your entire life. And let me tell you what, I haven't been through Judgment Day yet, but I have a hard time believing you're going to be able to look in Jesus' eyes and tell him that you did everything in your power to walk according to the commandments that he gave you. The same ones that God gave Moses in the beginning of the book. Don't kid yourself. Each one of us is going to have to stand before the judgment throne of Jesus. And we are going to have to make an account for our lives. And you're not going to be able to lie to him about how you lived your life. In the book of Peter, it tells us that judgment starts with the people of God. And in Matthew 12, Jesus told us that we will have to account for every idle word we ever spoke. I'm not looking forward to that one, and you shouldn't be either. But if you want to keep making excuses why you don't need to keep the Sabbath, or the dietary laws, or the feast days, or any other of God's laws that you don't like... Go right ahead. That's your choice. And if you would rather listen to a pastor that itches your ears and tells you exactly what you want to hear, then you go right ahead. That's your choice also. But just know that scripture tells you that you can't play the ignorance card on judgment day. It's not going to work. And at the very end of the day, the only person responsible for you and your life and your salvation is you.